from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Kimba Uma. Hello and welcome. Ban on commercial motorcycles and tricycles takes toll on operators as commuters lament hike in transport fares by bus operators in Lagos. Doctors call for the declaration of health emergency over Lassa fever. Kaduna state government announces first death from the disease and one new case. President Muhammad Buhari sets up committee to study new visa restriction against Nigeria by President Trump's administration restates commitments to productive bilateral relations with the U.S. And countries close borders to foreign visitors from China as deadly coronavirus spreads. Plus, business and sports. On business news tonight, crude oil prices declined further as markets grow more concerns about the economic damage of coronavirus. And on sports news tonight, American Sophia... The order by the Lagos state government restricting commercial motorcycles and tricycle operators to certain routes in the city has finally kicked in and is already recording major outcomes at the moment. Some persons who vowed to disobey the order have been restricted and arrested in some parts of the city as the state police command began the enforcement of the directive. The commission of police in the state, Akim Odumosu, who led the team of officers to various parts of the state to ensure compliance with the law, says that those arrested will face the consequences of their actions. But commuters also have their own side of the story. Our correspondent, Eni John Mekwa, now reports. The anger and frustration of women who have had to wait longer than usual at the boss park in Berger. Normally, they would have resorted to the use of either the commercial motorcycles or tricycles. But now, the buses are in high demand. This is almost two hours I stand here and not see motor. The enforcement is felt more by commuters who normally travel short distances. They say they are now billed double their usual fare and sometimes not even allowed to board. Now, there's nothing to take me from inside market now to BRT side. Will I walk from here now to TBS? So there's many areas like that. The Lagos state government has from the first day in February restricted the operations of motorcycles and tricycles to only approved routes, which is mostly inner streets. The government has, however, banned operations on 10 major expressways, as well as Ikeja, Surulere, Apapa, Lagos Mainland, Etiosa, and Lagos Island local government areas, and also nine local council development areas. There is a template all over the world that in order for you to ensure that you have effective traffic management and transportation in place in line with the uh, six pillars of the present government. Uh, it is very key you have to consider uh, mass transit operations in the state. The Lagos State Police Command, led by the Commissioner of Police, Hakim Dosumu, is at the fore of this enforcement. At Marina area, the Commissioner notices a number of tricycles on the road. A closer inspection shows that these belong to a group of persons living with disability and they are not happy about the enforcement of the law. We are begging before, now we are working, but they want to do this for us. The case is handed over to the DPO of the area. And just around Oniru, a motorcycle is noticed and the rider attempts to escape. Before the dust settles on that one, another is sighted. Once they do it now, it is confiscated, the court made that pronouncement. And subsequently, they will be crushed. They are not released today. They are not that they are going to pay a fine and release. They are crushing anyone that's confiscated. They must go through judicial pronouncement before they can go through that crush. It's going to be a long walk to rid the roads of motorcycles and tricycles because on the Ojota stretch to Ikorodu, some riders are still determined to make a living. So it's now up to the Lagos state government to balance the issue of unemployment, which may result 
from the enforcement of this law and the concerns of insecurity and accidents which this group of road users have been alleged to have cast in the state. In John Mepa reporting for Channel Television News. The National Association of Resident Doctors is asking the federal government to declare Lassa fever as a national health emergency. The association said that the current preventive and control measures are weak. The members are also asking the government to increase hazard allowances for the doctors because the risk they are exposed to could be there. The NEC noted the recurrent Lassa fever outbreak across the country and the weakness in the system in instituting appropriate preventive and control measures before the peak incidence period. NAD calls on federal government to declare a national emergency on Lassa fever and also evaluate the hazard allowance paid to healthcare workers considering the increased risk faced by health care workers. The association observed the unpaid 12-month salary arrears of her members at Ladoke Akintola University Teaching Hospital and 14-month salary arrears owed her members in Abia State University Teaching Hospital in Abia State. The non-payment of salary shortfall of 2014 2015 and 2016 by the federal government to her members across the country. There is timeline to governments, especially the state governors, to pay our doctors their outstanding areas. And of course, the time of interaction is not entirely up to us, but I want to assure you that our next meeting will be in three months' time. So I believe three months, time, three months is enough period for any meaningful negotiation and results to come out of that meeting. And still on the Lassa fever outbreak, the Kaduna state government has announced uh, the death of the first victim from Chicken local government area of the state. The state commissioner for health, Dr. Amina Mohamed Baloni, who made this disclosure in a statement, also confirmed a new case of the disease in Kajuru local government area of the state. She said that the new 34-year-old male Lassa fever patient has been confirmed positive, sent to the Infectious Disease Control Center. According to her, a total of 23 Lassa fever cases are suspected, and out of the number, 15 test results have come out negative, while six test samples are being expected. She said that a total of 40 people who had been in contact with the cases are being monitored and none has shown any symptoms, as she explains that the contact listing and follow-ups, as well as active cases search, are ongoing. The president has established a committee to study the updated methodology adopted by the United States government to assess compliance of certain security criteria by foreign governments. This is contained in a statement from the presidency in response to yesterday's announcement of a new ban restricting immigration from Nigeria and five other countries in an expansion of U.S. policy blocking travel from certain nations. The other countries affected are Sudan, Tanzania, Eritrea, Myanmar and Kazakhstan in a policy designed to tighten security for countries that do not comply with the U.S. minimum security standards or cooperate to prevent illegal immigration. The decision, however, does not apply to officials, business, uh, tourism, and student travel visas. The committee is to, uh, headed of course by the Minister of Interior, is to work out with the US government, Interpol, and other stakeholders, ways to ensure all updates are properly implemented. It adds that Nigeria remains committed to maintaining productive relations with the United States and its international allies especially on matters of global security. The addition of Nigeria to the six more countries on the U.S. visa ban is just one of the attempts by the Trump administrations aimed at restricting Nigeria 
from uh, traveling to the United States. In this latest case, the U.S. government cities failure to uh, meet its security and information sharing standards is the focus. This next report by our foreign affairs correspondent Amara Chubani takes a look at previous efforts aimed at achieving the same end. Many might be surprised to see Nigeria on the list of countries marked for a ban on certain types of visas to the United States, but so will citizens from Eritrea, Sudan, Tanzania, Kyrgyzstan and Myanmar. And yes, Africa's most populous nation has been on the radar of the U.S. government for a while now, despite having strong economic and security related ties to the United States. Last year, the Department of Homeland Security completed a review of countries evaluating whether the entry of their nationals into the United States could cause a public safety threat. It examined each country's ability to verify identity of its own nationals, information sharing practices with the United States, and possible terror or public safety risks. They then attempted to work with the countries to remedy outstanding issues, which ended up removing some countries from consideration. That was when the Trump administration decided the countries would be subjected to the visa restrictions. Illegal immigration has been a major target for the Trump administration, and the State Department once noted in 2018 that Nigerians made one of the highest number of citizens who overstayed their short-term visas to remain permanently in the United States. It said it was working modalities to curb the problem. Intention to curb the problem has probably led to the modification of visa policy towards Nigeria and other countries. According to a Quartz analysis of U.S. Census Bureau data, Africa has the fastest growing number of immigrants in the United States, as the number of African migrants grew at a rate of almost 50% from 2010 to 2018. Nigerians remain the largest population group of African migrants in the U.S. And last year, the curb on Nigerians emigrating to the U.S. began. First was the reciprocity fee payable at the U.S. Embassy after visa interviews. Reciprocity, as the name portends, meant to eliminate the difference in total cost for a Nigerian to obtain a comparable visa to the United States, equivalent to what Americans were paying to obtain a Nigerian visa. Then, a couple of weeks into the new year, a visa ban was announced aimed at curbing birth tourism to the United States, which the Trump administration said posed risks to national security. Consular officials have the authority to deny a visitor visa if they have reason to believe the applicant intends to travel to the U.S. for the primary purpose of giving birth. The U.S. president once expressed a desire to have more immigrants from developed countries and less from developing countries, a move he believes would be beneficial to the United States. Details of the new ban are expected in the coming days but have nothing to do with non-immigrant visas, at least for now. Amarachi Ubani, Channel Television News. In part two, after the break, truck conveying two... 20 feet containers falls on Oguru Road in Lagos, killing a woman and injuring two other people. Stay with us.